Hello, and welcome to A, a Couple, Couple Codes. Codes. <laughs> My name is Cody. My name is Emily, and that's how we start all of our YouTube videos. So we'll talk more about our YouTube channel later, but first we just want to say thank you for letting us tell our story today. We're going to be talking about our career transition into tech from our backgrounds in nutrition and food science. So just a roadmap for our talk today. We're going to start with our backgrounds, a little bit about us, a little bit about uh, our original career paths that we took, and then we're going to go into our milestones that we, we've encountered along our journey into tech. So our first milestone is getting educated and doing it in a um, manner in which we're kind of uh, not necessarily going back to school, uh, so self-education. And then the second thing is our YouTube community. Uh, that we've kind of developed through this journey that we've been going through. Next is getting involved with the local community, and lastly is starting our own business. And then we'll take questions after that. Uh, if you haven't inferred already, uh, we are a couple. We've been married for four years. We've been dating since high school to 10 years. Um, and I originally asked Emily out with a flash mob back in the day. So. so this is the start of our YouTube journey, our original YouTube video. Yeah, we've been tweaking the algorithm ever since, so <laughs> just constantly learning. Uh, who am I? I'm Cody Allen Stubbs. Now, why use my full name? Search engine optimization. I want to make sure that I can be found. Um, there's a lot of other Cody Stubbs out there, a baseball player. You know, he's, he gets up there in those, uh, those search rankings. So, uh, But a little bit about my background. Um, I went to Penn State for my undergrad. I graduated with a degree in food science. And originally, when I went to Penn State, I was interested in engineering. And specifically, I was interested in computer science. My brother, who is here tonight, um, he went to Penn State. He studied computer science. He became a software engineer. I thought that was an interesting career path to go down. So I started out thinking that way. And then coding boot camps became, started becoming a thing around the time I was going into college. And it was coming, becoming a bit more aware that you don't necessarily have to have a computer science degree to get a job in tech. So I decided if I'm going to go to college, which is something I wanted to do, then I'm going to get a degree in something that absolutely requires uh, a degree to get into that field. So I decided to become this. <laughs> now what the hell is this? Uh, this is a sensory scientist. And a sensory scientist is a specific kind of food scientist that helps product developers to do consumer research to design better products and to help them through the product development cycle. Um, specifically, uh, I did sensory and perception research, so flavor, profile, flavor profiles, like what does food taste like, um, and helping inform the food science product developers that way. I got my start at Penn State eating a lot of kale, and then I spent a little time at Ohio State drinking a lot of coffee, and I ended up at the Hershey Company where I ate a lot of candy, popcorn, you know, junk food. Um, but I had a good time while I was there, and I learned a lot. One particular aspect of being a sensory scientist is doing statistical analyses. You're doing a lot of human research, so you got to do a lot of statistics. And early on in my development as a sensory scientist, I chose R as a means of doing my statistical analyses. Kind of coming from that tech perspective, uh, wanting to develop generalizable skills that will help me outside of that as well, just to broaden my career kind of aspects. And at, during my time at the Hershey Company, I went from just doing simple custom plots to actually doing full-blown uh, web applications for myself and for my colleagues to help automate uh, not only my reporting processes, but sending out emails automatically and doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I got interested in tech again, specifically web development. And that's kind of how we got to here. <laughs> and I'm Emily Stubbs. So I also went to Penn State. I studied nutritional sciences instead of food science. So Cody and I used to joke at parties that he would make candy, and then I'd have to tell people that they shouldn't eat it. <laughs> but <laughs> I worked as a public health nutritionist for the Pennsylvania WIC program, which stands for Women, Infants, and Children. So I prescribed tailored food packages to low-income families and provided nutrition education. And then eventually I transitioned into a role at Penn State College of Medicine. So I was a research project manager on a grant that implemented culturally tailored interventions related to nutrition, physical activity, and community clinical linkages. 
So I got my start in tech just by teaching myself to code in my free time, and I fell in love with it. And so during our initial uh, careers, our, our, our original paths that we chose, we started developing other interests besides uh, the original degrees that we chose. So one of them obviously is tech, and then the other one was business. Specifically, we wanted to develop a business for ourselves in the long term. And so in 2021, we took a leap of faith and we left our full-time jobs to pursue those two interests full-time, um, both making our own businesses and also kind of getting educated in tech. So as we started this new full-time journey, teaching ourselves programming, we took two very different approaches. So I completed coding tutorials and Cody dove headfirst into his first full stack web application. So this is a selfie of my first ever Hello World in HTML. As you can tell, I was very excited. So I completed tutorial courses through Code Academy and through Code Camp in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I got a lovely certificate at the end of each course. And as I was completing all of those, I was also participating in the hashtag 100 Days of Code Challenge, which is where you code every day for 100 days straight and share your progress in an online community. And that was my first taste of participating in a community around and as Emily mentioned, I took a bit of a different approach. Uh, that is a QR code, so if you're interested, uh, we have a couple of those throughout these slides, so uh, feel free to check them out. But my approach was to go deep into solving one of our own specific problems. So we've been meal prepping for five years, and we've had an Excel document that just has a bunch of links to all these recipes. And um, we got a good understanding of the problems that are involved with planning for meal prep and the logistics for it. So I decided to create an application and put it up on the web. So I used Linode for cloud computing services, uh, set up a Linux machine, an Nginx server, having MariaDB on the back end, so SQL and PHP, and then jQuery for the front end. And so that was, that was my uh, initial attempt to get into the tech. So in the midst of all this, we decided to start our first business venture in 2022. And that was actually through Airbnb. So we pivoted from coding full time to starting our own short term rental. We converted our house into an Airbnb and couldn't code that much because every time we rented our house, we had to physically pack up all our belongings and leave. So it was a very busy time, but it was really fun. We ran it for six months and then we had to shut it down due to some new restrictions with our HOA. But it was a great learning experience. And our biggest takeaway is that we loved running our own business, so we knew that we wanted to do that again down the line. So we had to shut down the Airbnb, so it was a natural pivot to come back to programming. Uh, this time we wanted to take a structured approach to it. And specifically, Emily found the Odin Project, which is an open source online curriculum that essentially takes you from not really having an understanding of what the internet is to being able to deploy your own web applications. So it's a pretty big jump, but the curriculum stood out and a couple aspects of it stood out to us, so we decided to go with it. Uh, the Odin Project has two tracks. One is full stack JavaScript, the other is full stack Ruby. We chose JavaScript, and why we chose the Odin Project was because of three things. One of those being the curriculum. So there's a main curriculum, and then uh, the maintainers of the project actually curate some of the best online resources about certain topics throughout the curriculum and just kind of link to them and have you read them. The second thing is that there's projects and there's a lot of projects. It's a heavy focus on developing projects and getting you to actually do the things that a developer does. So setting up your development environment from the beginning and then having you do all of your uh, projects locally instead of within a coding sandbox. Uh, so that was something that stood out that we could have a portfolio at the end of the curriculum. And lastly, I mentioned that there's maintainers. It's a whole community online. Uh, there's a Discord server of the maintainers, people who have gone through the Odin project and have had success with it, gotten full-time jobs, and then also people who are actively going through it, all supporting each other and specifically helping with people that are going through it to help get unstuck without necessarily holding their hands or telling them exactly how to do it, more of where to get their answers from. So shortly after starting the Odin project, we decided that we wanted to document our journey. So we made our YouTube channel, a couple codes, and this was a 
way for us to talk with each other about what we are learning, also to participate with the online Odin Project community, and then also just to help us have individual reflection with everything that we are learning as we are completing our projects to help bolster those lessons. So in terms of content, we started out with some sporadic weekly updates. So it started the first week, and then the second week, then there was a five-week gap. And then eventually, around the holidays, we got into a weekly kind of rhythm with it. And um, we actually got so much, though, into a rhythm that we did daily vlogs for a little bit um, throughout the week. And that was really a time for us to go into the nitty-gritty details, whereas the weekly updates were just to be kind of high level. What are the struggles we're having? How do we get through them? And what did we learn this week? Um, I also dabbled a little bit with live streams, but that got to be a little bit too much because those can go on forever and you're just kind of awkwardly sitting there by yourself, not sure like exactly who's there or who's watching. Uh, so I canned that for a bit, uh, but now we're back to doing uh, sporadic weekly updates because we got busy with uh, our business, which we'll talk about that in a second. So this is our viewership over the lifetime of our channel. So as you can see toward the beginning when we were making very sporadic videos, didn't really have that many viewers. But as we started posting more consistently, our viewers grow over time. We don't have a huge following, but we have a nice little YouTube community, a lot of repeat viewers. A lot of the people watching our videos are people who are completing the Odin Project or people who are just interested in teaching themselves how to code. And so people have said that our videos help to motivate them to keep going with their own progress because a lot of them are doing it while they're working full time and trying to do this in their free time. And then People have said that they learn new things, especially when we go into the nitty gritty and talk about how we completed our projects and how we took our problems. We've also learned from our viewers. So I had a viewer in another country who was completing the Odin project around the same pace as me, and we would exchange advice about our projects. So we have a nice little give and take with our YouTube community. In terms of time, it was about two to three hours per video. So doing one video a week is pretty doable. Uh, definitely takes a little bit of effort just to get into the rhythm of doing it. Uh, but then doing the daily vlogs uh, got to be a bit much. We were coding for eight hours a day, then having dinner, and then one of us would jump on and start actually making our video, uh, our vlog. Then they would start editing. The other person would jump on to make a vlog, then start editing, and then it'd be bedtime. And so we'd be online all day long, and so we decided we needed a change. To get offline, we came to Tech Lancaster. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. That was like toward the start of this year. We had been doing the Oath project for about seven months, and then we went to Pub Standards, and we had a really great time. We got to meet some awesome people, hear all their stories, and it was really inspiring for us. So thank you guys. Um, we went to a couple different meetups, and we were fortunate to be able to volunteer at CPOS, Central Pennsylvania Open Source Conference. Had a really great time there, and we're really blown away by just all the engagement and the participation of everyone there and the quality of the presentations. They were really great. We were particularly inspired by one presentation by Jill Walker on cultivating a lifestyle business. So that actually led us to milestone number four of our learning journey. So in combination of like eight or nine months up to this point of doing the Odin project, we were starting to develop some confidence and then with CPOSC and getting out with the local tech community, we started to get some inspiration and we combined both of those to form Central PA Web Designs. Uh, so that's what we've been working on for the past two months, uh, specifically getting our website up, kind of talking about what we're doing and what's our business model, um, and working with lawyers and our attorney to actually get things up and running. So we're a mom and pop web design studio uh, doing web design and development for small businesses. So our goal is to basically make static informational web pages for really small businesses who don't have any website or who have a very poorly performing website. And we have a bit of a different model. So instead of charging a large lump sum fee up front and then handing a website over, we have a subscription service. So it's zero dollars down. And then we charge them a monthly fee that includes their web design, development, hosting, and maintenance throughout the lifetime, lifetime of their website. And in terms of next steps, uh, we're going to be focusing most of our activities on getting an income at this point. Uh, so 
trying to get clients with our business, and then also trying to get full-time jobs. Um, in addition to that, we're definitely going to be coming out to more Tech Lancaster events. Uh, definitely been enjoying ourselves with them and love getting out to get to know people. Um, in the spare time, we're going to be chipping away at the Odin project. We're still working our ways through it, and then also creating some content with the YouTube channel. And then I'm also sharing a little bit of my journey from sensory scientist to software engineer on LinkedIn as well. But if you guys are interested in connecting, uh, definitely feel free to come up and talk to us. Um, if you have any questions, then feel free. And thank you all. Yeah. Yeah, so at the beginning, like within our contracts, we do like specify scope of work. We have like an initial five page layout and then the customer can kind of insert the content that they already have or talk to us about their needs and then we can develop that as the process goes on. Zach. I would say for specifically developing mealprepfunday.com, that was, it just took a lot longer than I thought. Um, I, I just didn't know really what to expect. And then I was like, man, search is hard to do by scratch. Like just to come up with like doing tags versus users and all that different kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'd say like, just like underestimating how long things take. Cause it seems very simple in your mind, but then coming to actually building it is a lot different. I think for me, um, coming to the realization that you can really figure anything out if you give it enough time slash if you ask for help. And I never, like I didn't have any tech background at all, so it was extremely intimidating to come into this world and try to learn about it. And I feel like I used to ask all my tech questions to Cody. And so I reached a point where I was like, no, I probably shouldn't ask him. Like, I need to figure this out. And so just gaining that confidence to be able to figure it out yourself or ask for help if you get to a point where it's completely crazy. <laughs> That's why we got out, you know, trying to go to these events, um, <laughs> trying to maintain that spirit. <laughs> More people, no. Um, I mean, I think, like, along the lines of that is, it's been interesting to do this together because I feel like it's helped our relationship because it's been a really hard journey and we've had a lot of, like, stressful times of decisions that we've had to make, especially with, like, the business or when we're, like, working on our projects. When we were trying to do like coding all day and then make videos all night. Um, but being able to work with each other through those challenges and like learn about how each of us handles stress. And that has helped us in like all different aspects. So I feel like that's been like a transformative part of the journey. Yeah, I, I would echo that and just getting like refining our communication process more and more. Um, I mean, we've been together for 10 years, but it's been a lot accelerated with like making these business decisions and assessing risks together and what we're interested in was definitely a big part that kind of refined and is still refining how we talk to each other and how we work through that. start our own family and so we want this to be a part of our life where obviously we're both very interested in 
the work that we'd be doing. Not only just we both enjoy building the websites, but also working with small business owners. So there's like that meaningful aspect of it. And probably having that be part time as we are starting family. Yeah, and I would say it's not necessarily, it's more of like uh, income diversification as opposed to just growing and getting wealthy kind of perspective. Uh, so it is more of a long-term kind of slow thing as opposed to fast and heavy. Yeah. So. Yes. So yeah. That, <laughs> so it was it was profitable, um, and it was profitable very quickly. Uh, if we, yeah, I mean, we got Superhost at was it at six months? Like yeah, it was pretty much like by the end, at like the minimum time when we could have gotten it, we got it like yeah. right as we were shutting down. But we had a really great experience with it. Uh, my mom actually runs Airbnb, so that was where we got some of the inspiration. Yeah. But it was really fun to do the whole setup process. Uh, do all the like in client engagement, like talking with all of our uh, people who are staying at our house. Yeah, and I think related to like the the central PA web designs business in relation to kind of our long term interests as well. Like we're not necessarily stuck on tech as being the business that we ultimately set up. We're going to try things out, see what they where they go. If they don't go anywhere, we're going to move on. Um, I mean, obviously, do it long enough to see if it, it'll work. But um, we are interested in Airbnb or something like that down the line in regards to like next home purchase or something like that. Something that we don't have to move out every three days and <laughs> live in a camper and you know set up a tent or do something like that. Um, so it is kind of keeping that in mind, something a bit more sustainable for our family goals as well. So. Um, I mean, I'd say I'm open-minded to possibilities, but I think this shift back to tech is something that I'm definitely doing. Uh, if, like, the main thing is getting a job within tech and going with that and then using that as a jumping off point for taking risks with other businesses. The Central PA Web Designs is like, the smallest viable kind of thing that we could do right now in addition um, to what we're currently doing. Um, and since we're not necessarily trying to go for medium sized or large corporate environments like or clients, um, it's something that's a bit more manageable for our current skill sets. Um, so yes, we're open, but I think this tech direction is a bit more of a solid path. Um, to give us leverage for doing risks in other parts of life. Um, I think when we were first, yeah. like each individually thinking about going into tech, uh, we had we've had a lot of moments where we're like, yeah, let's do this, and then we don't actually do it, and we would flounder a lot. And as we've started doing all of these things, we've gained confidence each time that we actually follow through enough to try it out, do it and then decide, okay, is this something we want to continue or not? So I feel like that's been another part of the process where we're open-minded, but we're also following through on what we start to actually see if that's something we want to keep doing. Because we don't want to sit here for 10 years and be like, yeah, maybe we should have gone into tech or, you know, that kind of thing. Problem solving. 
And yeah, for me, uh, some of the timelines for like sensory research and, and product development from like food products is a bit more, it's, it's very long and like to see like the impact of your results, like it may never even get to the market like to actually do things. So the feedback of doing that work was a bit more long term um, and slow, whereas I like the kind of immediate uh, tasks that are associated with technology and, and like software engineering and getting that immediate feedback instead of waiting for like a product developer to do three months of like slaving in the, the pilot plant and then I have two samples but I have to tell them to get like five more samples and five more prototypes so that I can actually get this out to hut and do that kind of stuff. So it, it was more of a pivot in a different direction for sure. Joel? Um, so that was, I think, one of the reasons for doing the Odin project. Um, JavaScript was just more familiar to me, so I thought to just go with that for the Odin project. In regards to uh, the Meal Prep Fun Day app, um, I had some influence from um, a community called Indie Hackers Online, <coughs> and specifically someone who was just like, use lemp stack and I was like all right I'm just gonna go with that um, so I looked up what the hell is a lemp stack and then took the each of the components and figured out how to get things set up um, so I'm tr I try not to jump around with things um, even though like outside of like in specifically with like technologies because um, like there's so much just always evolving in the tech world um, I'm just trying to focus on the specifics with the Odin project right now, but I don't necessarily have like a way of doing that, just kind of going with what's in front of me right now, so. That sounds like a way of going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like your background in nutrition has brought like a certain perspective to technology? Um, so with uh, sensory science, I think it's the closest thing to it in uh, kind of software engineering is user experience. Um, so it does have a bit more of like a consumer focus, um, trying to think about what does the consumer want. It's a very different um, world because it's not information management, it's more like pleasantness and like does this make me feel good because I put it in my mouth and it melts kind of thing. Um, but yeah, thinking about uh, the consumer, and it actually has given me a bit more of appreciation for the product developers that I worked with, because I didn't necessarily have all that experience as well, or understood what they went through. It's, it is a different realm completely, but I imagine some of the cycling stuff is, is very similar, so. I'd say with uh, my background in nutrition, most of my positions relied really heavily on communication and also managing relationships with community members. And so I see that fitting into our business, obviously with communicating with local business owners. So that's part of it that I'm particularly excited about. So with your web design business, um, what do you think about marketing? I, mean, I feel like you guys are targeting folks that don't have websites and may not actually be in the online space, right? How do you market to them? How do you find these clients? How do you plan on finding these clients? Uh, so we do have a lead generation process. Essentially, it's using Google to hone in on a specific industry and then click on all the search results that come from that for the first like 10 pages of that. And like some people will have websites. Some of them will be already contracted with agencies. Some of them will just be a Wix site. Some of them will just be another page builder. Some people will just have a Facebook page. 
So the Facebook pages, the Wix, and the other page builders are the people that we're focusing on. Um, we can see that they they at least have an interest in an online web presence, but they don't necessarily have the time to put all the effort into uh, getting something a bit more polished set up. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks.